Hello YouTube, this is Logic Crazy and I'm Jonathan Workington and here is another tutorial on creating a chess engine. This is uh, going to be the first uh, tutorial dedicated just to uh, the theory and uh, the programming of a chess engine. The first thing we need to do is of course represent the board. Just like in our Sudoku tutorials, uh, we had to represent the board as an array in a 9x9 grid. In my example, in this tutorial we will be representing the chess board as a 8x8 uh, array, just like this. I'm just pasting this. Uh, feel free to download the um, text file in the uh, description below and uh, copy and paste this into there. Um, but uh, basically, uh, this is how I want uh, my array to be. It works like this. Um, uh, small letters um, are one side and big are the other side. So you could think of uh, big uh, capital letters um, are whites, um, in a sense. Uh, I'll be explaining the complexity of what is white when the board is flipping around and changing and stuff. But um, white actually turns into black sometimes and stuff. But anyways, uh, for now, capitals in general are white. They start and lowercase are uh, black. And so you can see uh, uh, P obviously stands for pawns. R stands for rook. K stands for knight, um, because that's how it's spelled, although it sounds like an N. B stands for bishop. Q stands for queen. But A, the reason I don't pick a K is because K is already taken up with knight. And I picked the letter A because of the ace of cards. Um, and, uh, and I have actually uh, uh, did come up with that on my own, although when I've been looking around on... Uh, uh, to uh, other sites and other chess engines, open source chess engines, I've noticed that they also pick uh, an A there, and so uh, maybe I just picked that up from somewhere else. But anyways, I use an A in this tutorial to represent the king. Um, just uh, a heads up on that, and of course a space. You can't leave it uh, as a nothing. It has to be a space. An empty space is, means that uh, nothing is there. And so this is basically what the chess engine does. And I'll just give you a little bit of reasoning on uh, why I use an array, although it seemed the obvious choice. Um, I use array because it is uh, simple and uh, it visually makes sense. If I want to move my pawn here, if I want to start the game with my pawn moved up two spaces, that would be uh, the way I would do it. And it just visually looks uh, very nice and it's very easy to debug that way, very easy to display and uh, it just uh, works well that way. Um, what most professional chess engines use is something called a bit board, and a bit board is much, much better. Uh, for one, arrays in Java are quite slow. They say that arrays uh, are uh, about 160% to 200% uh, slower than arrays in C, and um, bit boards are way faster than arrays uh, regardless of the program. So even in C, if it's a 200% increase in speed from Java, using a bit board in C is uh, many more times faster. It's uh, incredibly faster, but it's much, much harder to understand and to debug and to understand what's going on. Even to look at a bit board and know where a pawn is is uh, a nightmare to figure out. It's not terribly hard, but uh, it takes a lot of work and effort. So we'll begin our tutorial um, and uh, make something that's understandable and not necessarily the world's best engine. Um, and, uh, and basically there's two philosophies to engines. One is uh, to think uh, fast and dumb and the other is to think uh, slow and smart. And both can lead to similar results and so this tutorial will be uh, mostly focused on the latter uh, to make a, a slower engine, yes but it'll try to be very smart with each of its moves and hopefully overcome some of its slowness, although a combination, of course, would be the best, and that's how some engines are so smart. So that's a little bit about the, uh, uh, the chessboard, um, and it's, uh, of course, a, a static, and it's uh, mentioned for the class, so therefore it's a global. And uh, we're going to quickly create one uh, procedure, although we won't fill it in, and that will be... Uh, public uh, static and it'll be uh, it'll return a string and we'll call it uh, possible moves and
end like that now what uh possible moves now it's complaining about the return string um so I'll just put in a return that just to make it pleased now with possible moves what we'll be uh the first thing we'll be creating is just in this starting position or any position what moves are possible can this piece here move up to here and the answer of course would be no um can this rook move over to this king the answer would be no uh all those sorts of questions need to be answered what move what are the possible moves and we will be re representing those moves as a string and uh, the format of the string will be let's just put a comment here x1 comma there won't be commas in the string but i'm just separating them x1 y1 x2 y2 captured piece and uh so uh and it'll just have a whole list so every there's five uh single uh character pieces that'll represent one move so if the string is 10 strings long or 10 uh characters long then that means that uh it will have two possible moves the first five will be representing the first move and the second five will represent the second move and this is my unique uh notation instead of the complicate more complicated for programming uh uh notation that uh is uh the official notation so x1 y1 that would be uh, for instance here um you would be uh six down and uh seven across um because we start zero zero if you remember that so this would be uh x1 y1 would be six seven to represent this p and if this p went from there to there let's say it would be six seven five seven space captured piece is blank and the reason for the captured piece being recorded is that uh we need to know that information for undoing moves uh such as uh let's say i had a pawn here at the beginning of the game and this pawn here moved over and captured a pawn now if i just said from this spot to this spot x1 y1 to x2 y2 if i undid the move all i would do is take that p and put it back at the original location forgetting that there used to be a p over here a lowercase p and so that's what the captured piece uh notation is at the end so that's a little bit of the overview of behind the scenes this is uh the structure for the how to represent the board and how to represent a move so uh i look forward to next time as we start to uh uh figure out possible moves until next time enjoy java